Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. So how many of you have a, a, a like me and have a little bit of a dysfunctional relationship with money or uh, you, you would like to have a more functional relationship with it? So I had a really dysfunctional relationship um, with it. To, to me, when I was growing up, I remember really clearly actually being so confused about money. So in New Zealand, uh, rugby is is prob probably the, the main sport. Well, it's definitely the main sport. There's a couple of those. But, but in, the, in the late 80s, uh rugby went from uh, well early 90s i guess as well rugby went from being uh, an amateur to a professional sport and uh, we have a, a team called the all blacks who are pretty amazing and as they were going through this transition i remember what having my dad watch watch the sport and there were some people that were you know getting paid a lot of money and doing it for the money and all these things and my dad had a really pro big problem with this and he would say, you know, they shouldn't be doing it just for the money. You know, they, they should do it just because they love it. I remember it clearly. Uh, he said, it should be enough that you get to play for your country. He goes, I, I remember he said, I would give my left arm to, to be in that team. You know, he was like, they, they, you know, and he was so mad about it. Hey, and, and I kind of got this thing. It was like, well, you're not really allowed to do something that you really love and make money. And I, and I remember the idea really clearly that he was so angry at, at these people to get paid really well for something that also was uh, the most respected you could be. You know, there's, there's nothing that's more successful than being in that team. And so it just, it just got really interesting. And then at the same time, uh, a really close family friend of ours um, started a business and it was actually a nightclub uh, or sorry a bar restaurant and I remember when he purchased this it was just like a uh, like a, it was a mechanics like it, it used to just look after cars and he got this place and, and I remember when he bought it and I was in there as like a six or seven year old like sweeping up the dust as they turned this into a nightclub or bar well this this restaurant nightclub slash bar turned out to be the most successful uh, restaurant you know, in, in the area, and they became multi, multi, multi millionaires. And I remember because it was, it was hit the, my, my best friend's um, father and my dad were the coach of our sports team. And so all of a sudden, they got really rich, and they got uh, better cars than us, and they got, he got better equipment than me. And uh, I remember very clearly saying to my dad, oh, look, look at his, the son's name was Matt. And I'd say, look at Matt's, uh, you know, new cricket bat and his new gear. You know, can I go get that? And I remember my dad's pain of not being able to get that for me. Uh, when I was about nine, that friend ended up going to a different school and we couldn't afford for me to go to that school. We drifted apart. And so it was very painful. In fact, uh, I even remember there was, there was so many times where I stopped wanting to ask for things because I knew that that wasn't available to us. And so I got this idea really early that, you know, money could create my, give me more uh, uh, abundance and, and more success and, and these things. So I got very confused. Hey, so here's, here's how I got confused. You ready for this? I got confused because uh, I was told, you know, poor people or people who are homeless, they're lazy. You know, did anyone get told that? Well, they're just lazy. They should just, they should just get a job, you know, homely, like they should just, you know, get a job. And then, but at the same time, I was told, well, rich people are greedy. You know, they, they, they should give some of it away. They're greedy. So I don't want to be lazy. I don't want to be greedy. So what do I do? You know, <laughs> like, what do I do? You know, I, I, I remember uh, I lost a, my, I bought my, I got given a really nice, you know, sweatshirt and, and I lost it. And I remember my dad was furious at me for losing it. He said, don't lose that. That costs so much money. He said, now you're just going to have to be cold. He's like, you, you know, we know we can't get you another one. And, you know, don't lose that. And, uh, and, and so I was like, oh, so it's painful to lose these things because they cost money. And it was like, well, you know, and then at the, then at the same time, it was like, OK, but, but look, money's not everything, son, because these players over here should just play for free. 
Can you see the confusion building here? It's like, you know, I've been told you, you should work hard for money. You work hard for it. There's nothing better than an honest day's labor, an honest day's work. There's nothing better than that. But, but, but son, make sure you work hard at school and get a really good career because you don't want to dig holes for the rest of your life. You know, you don't want to do, I mean, you said, don't dig holes for the rest of your life. So work, work hard in school. You know, hey, if you clean your room and do your chores, we'll give you pocket money, you know, instead of you should just do that because it's what a good human does. No, we'll reward you with money. We'll reward you with money, you know. Son, I can't, I can't you know, he would say to me, I can't come spend time with you. I know it's the holidays from school, but I have to go to work. Because that's what I need to do as the, as the man of this family. Can you just, just think this picture? As the man of this family, you'd say, I need to put food on the table. And so I can't spend time playing with you, even though I'd love to do that. But I make sure, you know, I make sure there's food on this table. And, and so there's, there's so much here, isn't there? There's so much. If you think about your own history as well, there's so much confusion. You know, you're, you're generous if you give money to others. You're generous if you give money to others. You're a show off if you flaunt it, but don't take handouts from others. So think about that. You're generous if you give money, but don't take handouts for others. We earn our money. We don't need other people's help. You know that pride of not needing other people's help? Wasn't that weird? It's like admire people who give money away, but never you want it, don't want given to you. You know, you're, you're fine. You look after yourself. But at the same time, you know, each week buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> you know, save for retirement. When you save enough, then you can finally do what you want, right? And, and so, so all of this, and just think about it for you, like all of this is bubbling around and, you know, my unconscious growing up. And, and I think the only thing that I really landed on, the only thing that I really landed on was that, look, if I could have a lot of it, life's going to be better. <laughs> you know, like that, that's, uh, you know, that's where I ended up. <laughs> And I just went, you know what? All of this is bloody confusing, but it seems that if I have it, at least I can have stuff that I want. And so, so, so that's where, where I, I went. I said, well, well that, that's really where, where we really should do. So I said, whatever this money thing is, it seems to be really, really important, like really important for adults. You know, they spend their whole life going after it. They never want to lose it. They're really happy if they win it. You see? And I said, yep, it's really important to adults because basically they worship it. It puts, it, it's the thing that actually puts food on the table. It's the thing that pays the rent. It's the thing that provides electricity. And it's the thing that they have to go do to ensure we're all looked after. And so that was like a decision that I, that I made. And I wonder if, if others made that as well. wonder if others made that decision. I, I, I did. And so I decided that I needed, I needed to, to figure out this money game. And, uh, and, and I did, you know. So after a lot of, a lot of learning, uh, you know, our, one of our companies does over 20 million a year. My, my other company does uh, about 4 million a year. And, uh, and, and Harriet and I have savings and investments that mean if we don't do anything, um, we, we can live off it. I think on last count, it's 20, 27 and a half years if I stopped, you know, so, so pretty, pretty, pretty good place. But, but, it, but it took me so long to figure it out. I realized that money's a very confusing thing for a lot of people, but it has very simple principles and very simple structure. And so I want to explain some of that. And then I want to talk to you guys and we'll do some recodes and uh, have some fun. Um, I've been, yeah, I'm really, really big on this. I think it's something that we can really focus in on and, and create a lot of extra um, resources and wealth and those sort of things. So, so let's talk about this a little bit, hey? So, so what is money? And that's such a big question. You know, what is it? What is this thing? Most of you know my answer. If you've read my book or you're here, you know, money is a measurement. It's a measurement. It's not energy. It's none of that rubbish. It's just a measurement. Okay. It's a measurement of value. And what it is, it's a unit of choice. A unit of because sometimes there's a money, money's a measurement. It's a measurement of value. Uh, it's a unit of choice. And so 
in order to receive it, you must provide value to another person in a way they want to pay for it. So, so there's really two different uh, aspects or three, I guess, really three. The, the first is that you must have a way to create value to exchange it for money so that you can receive it. Okay, so this first thing is you must be able to receive it. And the way we receive it is that we create value for others uh, in a way that they desire to pay for it so we can receive it. Uh, the second thing is that we must do is that uh, we then must grow it, right? There's only a few things you can do to really grow it or to have it uh, expand. And, uh, and those are you can buy stuff. <laughs> you can buy stuff and you can rent it out or you can buy stuff and watch it appreciate in value. The other thing you can do to grow it is you can loan your money out. So you buy a share, you loan it to a company and let that company make money from it and you receive interest. So there's not a lot you can really do with it. The last thing is obviously you can spend it uh, and enjoy the choices. So you, you receive it, you grow it or you spend it and, and enjoy the choices. So there's not a lot there. I mean, you know, none of it really says that it's going to create happiness. It's what you do with it. But, but that's really it. So in order for you to, to truly step into this, you must get into a, a good structure uh, with money because it's not like there's not uh, enough opportunities to create it or to grow it. Is it true? It's like, it, it's not like there's not enough opportunities. Like we all walk in the same world, right? Right, Is that, that's right, isn't it? Like there's, there's more than enough ways to do it, eh? Like, like that's for sure. Like there are so many freaking ways to do it. And uh, and the only reason that that you don't have it is, well, one, what we're talking about today, really. But there's there's so many ways to do it. So just write this down. What, what you have um, when it comes to abundance and finances uh, is a direct reflection of your internal structures around, around what's um, possible. So we'll, we'll talk about that and, and, uh, and we'll do a recode on it. So even though what I'm talking about today, it seems like it's focused on money, right? But, but really, it's actually more about freedom and choice. See, money is just a way for you to have freedom and choice, which is actually the experience in life. And we can have freedom and choice without the money. Usually, we are blocked. We are blocked around freedom and choice. Like we're actually not free and choosing the life we love. And that's actually what we're more scared of. And I'm going to explain that. So, so letting your, your life be like the way you want it is about having that choice, that power, instead of living in a place of you know, powerlessness. Okay. This isn't about greed and it's not about fear of not having enough, you know. Um, there's, there, there's many ways for us to envision a reality where we don't have enough and then try to preemptively like guard against all the scenarios, right? Like we could do that. That's not what today or any of the money sessions are gonna be about. When you truly know that you create your life, you know, all the way in your soul, when you truly know you're that, you, you won't need to have all the money in the world to feel safe and happy. Is it, does everyone get that? Like, you won't need it to feel safe and happy. You already have that. However, it's just a nice ally. <laughs> you know, money's just a fun little ally in your, uh, your journey of life. It's just like it's a nice little fun thing. You're already going to be happy and safe and free. And then, hey, well, this thing's a nice, you know, a nice friend to bring on the ride because I can use it to create different choices and I can help have helpers and these sort of things. And, and and I think that's a really good way, hey, a really good way to think about it. It's just a beautiful little friend or ally that can be there if you choose it to be. But, but see, most people have this problem with money because they assume it's limited. Hey, they assume that money's limited and it's hard to come by. But it's, it's more like oxygen, okay? So most of us don't feel like we need to own all the oxygen in the world to be safe. You know, like when you need air, you usually just breathe <laughs> and it's there. 
okay? We breathe in, we breathe out. And you breathing in even more air doesn't stop anyone else breathing in their air, you know? Like, unless you get trapped or something, you know, in like some sort of door that doesn't have any more air coming in, that's a different scenario. But generally in life, you know, when you're breathing in air, it's not affecting anyone else. And and that's like money. Like, it's just, because, because see, money it's not finite it's put it this way there is as much money in the world as there are problems and desires that humans have times by about 30 to incorporate fractional banking and credit you know like or maybe times by 100 i don't know massive it's so big you just can't even think about how much there is you know, it's like, it's not that it's nowhere near. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's just massive. And, and so, so money's just this idea we made up. Does that mean it's just an idea? Like it's an idea that you've got that and I've got this and I'm going to give this to this person. And we've got a way for, uh, for, you know, you know, for tracking it, like, and that's it. it it's really cool. So, uh, you know, there's a little bit of an intro. Let's talk a little bit about relationship with uh, money. Who's enjoying today so far? Got, got the brains, cogs thinking. I don't mind what it is that uh, you want to do or have with money. I just think it's a fun ally. And I'm sure you can find a, a, a reason and a place to put the money if you had a huge amount of it. I'm sure there's people you, you could help, I'm sure charities you could support. Uh, you know, there's so many creations. There are, you know, homeless uh, dogs, homeless people, people who need food. There's, if you created abundance uh, of money, I guarantee you're not going to have um, a problem with places to, to put it. And, and so if you can do it in a fun, enjoyable, exciting way, knowing that it doesn't have the power of you, then why the heck not? Hey, why the heck not? Let's do it. So, so look, there, there's many different ways that we relate to money. And many of them aren't attractive forces. Now, an attractive force meaning something that sticks together, okay? The, the first way that we relate to money I see all the time is like an angry adolescent. Like an angry adolescent. Someone's just typed in that I my audio is breaking up. Is there a problem with the audio? Okay, I'm getting more than enough that it's good. Okay, I'm going to keep going. I'm sorry if for whoever that is. It doesn't seem that it's got anything to do with me. Cool. Okay. Uh, so, so some of us relate to money like an, an angry adolescent. Like we're just mad at it. You know, like you know, like you know, like you see sort of a teenager and and they're just they're just they're just mad, and they're like, you know, why you know why aren't you just doing it? like entitled, and why aren't you just there, and uh, and that's. That's, that's one way. Uh, and, and we all know that an, an angry adolescent, an angry teach, uh, teenager really just, you know, pushes, pushes, pushes it away. Like who wants to be in relationship with that, where they're just, you know, really, really, really mad. So the, the next one is, I, I see people that are in a relationship with money, um, unworthy, and but pleading for it. Pleading for it. Like, um, you know, like a beggar on the street. Like, please, 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 please. And you sort of, you're like, oh, yeah, okay, here. And you, you don't want to stay near to them, right? Like that, like a beggar. Like, please, please, you, you're going to save me because I'm littler than you. Please, money, save me. And we're, whereas the, the angry teenager sort of um, re relationship is like, you know, I don't even need you. The, the next side that I see it is uh, that we relate to money is superior. I don't need that thing, you know. I'm above. I'm above those low-level people who need money. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like okay. <laughs> you know? uh, a, a next, uh, a next way. So, so angry adolescents. Can someone type these out? Angry adolescent, unworthy. That we're superior. But well, the next one is that it's it's an inconvenience. Like, oh, gosh, I have to go do that money thing. Like, oh, can't be bothered. You know, like it's like this huge inconvenience in their life that they have to make money, you know, or, or have money. So it's uh, it's an inconvenience. Uh, then the next the next one is that we relate to it like it will it will save me. It will it will make everything better. You know, I actually had a friend around about a month ago 
uh, came around here and was completely in this relationship with it. It will save me. If I just had that, everything will be better. You see? And, and, and we relate to it, we relate to it like that. Uh, the, the next one is that if I get an, and this is actually where I was stuck, okay? The next one is that it will prove my validity, is that if I have enough of it, then, then the world will go, you know, you, you're worthy. Hey, you're worthy. And then, that was it. I was like, well, if I have a lot of this, it was my identity. And, and actually, when you're in that proving to the world mode, uh, and you, you go and achieve a lot of it, you're then just frightened of losing it. <laughs> you know, you're then just completely um, frightened of losing it because it is your value. So, so those are the ones that I wrote down as broad relationships. So I'll just quickly go through them, maybe one or two of them or none of them. I don't know. Maybe one presents to you. Angry adolescent, like you're just pissed off with it, annoyed. Unworthy, uh, but pleading. Superior. Their money is just an inconvenience. Their money will save me or that it might prove my validity. So those are some good ways. Did anyone catch them all? If you did, type them in for everyone else because I'm speaking fast. Sorry that I'm speaking fast, but you might just have to listen fast because <laughs> uh, I don't feel like slowing down today. So money isn't any of those things. And, and obviously those relationships are, are all, all, you know, totally fine with you. The biggest thing uh, is that money is an ally. Hey, money is, uh, it, it's an ally. Money is a friend on the, you know, on the journey, okay? It, it's, it's to take you, it's to go with you wherever you want to go. It's just an ally. It's just a friend. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's not really anything other than that. How, how many of you like that, that as a metaphor? Like, it's just a friend that's just there to, to accompany you, you know, where you're going. It, other than that, there, there's, not, there's nothing else other than that. It's just a, a friend. It's just there. Uh, and it's a, it's a good friend. I want you all to write this down. It's very um, necessary. So please write this down. If money's not important to you, it won't show up. If it's not important to you, it won't show up. Now, I'm not saying that it's the most important thing because that'd be crazy. I'm just saying if you don't make it an important thing, it's not going to show up. Right? Like you, you, you need to say this is important to me. It's important to me to have it. That, that, that's if you choose to live in this, this field that I'm creating on this call um, is, is you've got to make it important. You've got to make it important. See, most of us haven't allowed ourselves to just say it's important to me. Like it is important to me to have it, have this ally, to have this friend. It's important. And, and really just choosing it, choosing to say it's important. And, and then notice all the stuff that comes around it. It's important. It's not the most important, but it is important. And I, and I do choose to have it. And it's just a, a silly a silly measurement it's just a friend it's just there and it gives me more choices it's a unit of choice so it's just important hey? so so it's just it's just important and, and that's uh that's you know you wouldn't you don't have a friend who's not important to you so it's as important to you as as your family as your friends it's just it's important to you you know no one says you know my life's about my friends you know, it's like, that's not what we say, but they're still important to us. I mean, life's around meaning and having meaningful relationships a lot of time. So the reason why something that's important to you hasn't stuck with you or become a friend is because of structures. And uh, many times we're in some unconscious structures with money uh, that, that has been picked up that we really should recode and let go of. Um, because the, the, some of the structures and some of those relationships, they just don't um, th they don't connect to a good a good working relationship with this this thing. So you do have a subconscious or unconscious, whichever word you choose, uh, system running in the background, 
And it is like you've got two lives. So you do have the conscious part of you, self-conscious that, you know, is, is wanting to have a great life, but you have this other, this other aspect. Now we all know that the other aspect of us, that unconscious automatic um, feeling based system, it has a mind of its own. It's why, you know, you can drive a car without really needing to think about it because you've programmed the body to be able to have all the conditioned responses that it needs to drive the car, which is a very complex task. By the way, if you ever injure your hand or your wrist and you have to try to clean your teeth with the wrong hand, <laughs> that, that's it, unless you have an electronic uh, toothbrush, but, but you'll notice a massive difference because you haven't trained the unconscious how to use the wrong hand. So anyway, we, we know that this part of us has a brain of its own. Like, if you go watch a scary movie, right? Like you go watch Jaws. Hey, you go watch, uh, you go watch Jaws. <laughs> if you go watch Jaws, your conscious brain logically knows that that's not a shark. I mean, it doesn't even really look like it, right? But we all know that unconsciously we can't help the reactions. True. We, we can't, we, we know that it's not real. Like logically we walked into that cinema and we saw the screen and we know it's not real, but behind the scenes, something else is doing things, right? What's that all about? And where did that programming come from? Well, we're innately programmed, you know, to, to be scared of certain things. That's innate. Now here's what also happens. Between the ages of zero and three, and definitely by six, your unconscious programming gets coded in whether you like it or not. And you jump as an adult without even knowing why. Logically, it makes no sense. Why couldn't you just have millions of dollars? Logically, it makes no sense. Think about that for a second. You are running old patterns that are there. Otherwise, why wouldn't you just have already got that which you want? See, there's just not enough conversation around this. And it's why I'm so passionate about what we do and about Recode. I'm so passionate about it because your life is a direct reflection of unconscious programming. The only way to shift that, get in the right structure, do recode. Hey, there's no reason for us to have fear of money. There's no reason for us to have fear of success or fa there's not all of this is programming. Hey, it's all programming. And that's really, really interesting. So, how does this programming happen? Well, our brain in the individuation uh, period, if you've read my book, who's read the book, by the way? Who's given it to a friend? Hope you have. Uh, get this out. Just a bit. In the book, we talk about the, uh, you know, the individuation uh, period. As we, as we become an individual, we want to learn how the world is. Now, one of the ways we learn how the world is, is we learn how to be safe and to belong to those which provide for us. Okay? Think about that. We learn how to belong to those that are going to provide for us so we're safe. We learn that. Now, if you grew up in a family, this might trigger some of you, but I'm, I'm doing it on purpose. If you, if you uh, grew up in a family and each morning they hit you in the head with a hammer, they hit you in the head with a hammer. Each morning you, you, know, you wake up, you get hit in the head with a hammer. And that just becomes normal. You don't know anything different. When you get older, and there's nothing hitting you in the head in the morning, your brain freaks out wondering where it is. In a family of thieves, the one who doesn't steal feels guilty. So the unconscious, even though getting hit in the head with a hammer is bad, because it's alive, because it survived it, that's all it knows. 
So it goes searching for someone to hit it in the head with a hammer. Please hit me in the head with a hammer. No, that's going to hurt you. Hit me. Ah, oh, that's how life should be. Because that is proven to be survived. Not getting that is infinitely risky to the unconscious. It's infinitely risky because getting hit in the head with a hammer is what you survive. That's what's the, how the world is. So we go searching for a hammer hitting family. We might even get our own hammer and start doing it. See, getting hammerhead is survivable. Not getting hit, completely unproven. Completely unproven. Now, in many families, that hammer is shame. That hammer is guilt. That hammer is poverty. That hammer is abuse and sometimes unfortunately it's even real hammers but whatever is coded in as survivable the unconscious will seek out the higher the stress the more sticky it is you see so in order for us to create we must realize that as we step into a new structure all of those old hammers are going to show up and that's what we recode down they only show up when there's absence of them. The worry about not having it only shows up when there's absence of them. And that's why we do the recodes. We're going to get you into the right structure and then we will let them go. So just sit in this for a second. Your relationship with money and success and what you have, it's not even yours. It's not even true. It's just whatever you coded in at an early age. It's not, it's not even true. It's not even the opinion necessarily of your family. It's just how it was then. Makes sense? It's not true. It's not right. It's just an opinion. However, that opinion is playing in the background and you're creating a direct reflection of it in your reality. Even to the point, even to the point where you will create something different but experience the same thing. I created all sorts of wealth, but I still experienced not good enough. I still experienced you got to work hard. And I continue to experience that. Even though the true creation out here looked different internally, I was having the exact same experience. Hey, Chris here again. I hope you really enjoyed that session. Obviously, it was streamed live to our Magnet Mind Masterclass uh, coaching program. If you'd like to be involved in that program, please do reach out. Uh, we do have spaces you can uh, apply for and you can join. So do let us know if it's something for you. And again, thank you so much for your support. Subscribe, like, and share this content so we can reach millions of people just like you and help them become conscious creators. Have a great day. Stay super conscious.